You've written about the uh, doctrine of discovery and, and spoken about it. Um, you, you mentioned it on this podcast, essentially this, you know, preposterous propaganda peddled in our schools that Christopher Columbus discovered a country that was already inhabited for, you know, hundreds of years and, and uh, by um, other people. It's, it's, it's this, you know, ludicrous if you say it like that, but yet our entire, you know, mythology as a country is based on this tremendous preposterous lie, uh, you know, that it, it, it points to the extreme racial biases that, you know, underpin every system that is in this country. Uh, I just wondered if you could speak to how we unravel uh, such obvious cognitive blockades that have been built in, in the people's minds and, and how we work to unravel the systems that have come with them. Yeah, so most, most people are not aware of what the doctrine of discovery is. So the 30-second elevator version of what it is, is it's a series of papal bulls, edicts of the Catholic Church written between 1452 and 1493. It's the church in Europe saying to the nations of Europe, wherever you go, whatever lands you find not ruled by white European Christian rulers, those people are subhuman, their land is yours to take. This is the doctrine that allowed European nations to enslave people from Africa, as well as discover lands here in, in Turtle Island, North America. Again, as you just said, you can't discover lands already inhabited. You can conquer those lands, you can steal those lands, you can colonize those lands. You can't discover them unless you believe the people live there are not human. Now that mindset gets embedded into the foundations of the nation. The Declaration of Independence, 30 lines after the statement on men are equal, refers to natives as savages. The Constitution keeps slavery legal in prison, never mentions women, specifically excludes natives, counts Africans as three-fifths of a person. These are the foundations we have as a nation that center white landowning men and marginalize everybody else. And so one of, the, one of the primary planks of my platform is I want to remove the racism, the sexism, and the white supremacy from our constitution. On my campaign website at markcharles2020.com on our blog, there is an article I put up there, a, a, a blog post I put up a few months ago. Probably about five or six years ago, I decided to read the Constitution as an adult. I had read it in school. I'd never read it as an adult, and I decided to read it, and I started going through it, and I was appalled at what I read. The entire Constitution, I actually began, began counting as I went through it. There are 51 gender-specific male pronouns, 51 he, him, and his who can run for office, who can hold office, who's protected by the document. We've never abolished slavery. We exclude natives, we exclude women. We count Africans as three-fifths of a person. The document is filled with racist, sexist, and white supremacist language from the, from the uh, preamble all the way down to the 27th Amendment. So I decided to edit it. I went through it, I downloaded it to my computer and went through it with a strike-through font. Every time I came across a gender-specific male pronoun, he, him, or his, I put a strike-through font through it and replaced it with a gender-neutral pronoun or a proper noun. The clause in the 13th Amendment that keeps slavery legal in prison, I put a strike-through font through that clause. The sections that specifically exclude women or specifically exclude natives, I put a strike-through font through those things. I didn't change the balance of power. I didn't change checks and balances. I merely removed the racist, the sexist, and the white supremacist language. And I actually made our constitution say what most people believe it says already. And so my plan is immediately after my inauguration to have someone present this as a bill into our legislator, the House or the Senate, and to have it passed as a correction to our constitution, and then have it sent out to the states to be ratified. Again, these aren't radical changes. All it's doing is removing the racism, the sexism, and the white supremacy. I tell people all the time, if you think our constitution advocates for equality and justice and, and fairness, read the document out loud, get on a Zoom call, preferably with some natives, some African Americans and some women, and read the document out, out loud. You'll be appalled at how exclusive it is, how racist, how sexist, how white supremacist it is. And I'm saying, let's just remove that language so we actually have a basis for our laws that is inclusive of everybody instead of exclusive of everybody.